What's up guys and welcome back to my channel and in today's video we're going to talk about video image stabilization. Pretty much any one of your major software companies like Final Cut Pro, Adobe, and then you have now DaVinci, they all have image stabilization options. And say you have a drone and you know you were flying it in a cinematic way, you have a vlog, Everything where the horizon is basically in a straight line with jitters and wobbles and things like that that you want to just get rid of so the video just looks smooth. Any one of those options would be a good solution to stabilize your video. However, what if you didn't fly one of those cinematic type, you know, whoop style drones and you wanted to get into something like FPV freestyle drone flying? Mm -hmm. That's right. Running that footage in something like DaVinci, have you ever tried it? You may have tried it and that's why you're watching my video today because what you'll find is a lot of choppiness after stabilization has been done. And it's because the software has a hard time figuring out how to stabilize your video, especially when you're doing flips, rows, and all kinds of tricks and things like that. Right now, currently, in my opinion, GoPro is number one when it comes to action cameras. And they're also number one when it comes to image stabilization in action cameras where you have situations where you're doing flips, rolls, and things like that with your drone. The Real Steady Go application, and this is not a plug by any means, I'm not sponsored, although I wish I was, uh, but it's just uh, from, in my opinion, Real Steady Go is hard to beat when it comes to that kind of footage. However, what if you don't have a GoPro? What if you're not willing to put a $350 camera on your drone doing freestyle only to see it crash into the ground and break into billions of pieces? What if you have cheaper hardware on there like maybe a run cam or maybe a Yi 4K which is actually the cameras that I use for my freestyle drones and if they crash you know your your it doesn't hurt your pockets as much. So in this video I'm going to show you what software I use and I'm going to show you step by step on how to use this software so stay tuned. So let's get on the computer and get started. All right guys, so we're gonna install a piece of software called Virtual Dub and a filter called DShaker and DShaker is what actually does all the magic. All right, so I'm gonna open up my text file here and uh, we have a bunch of links. These links is the links I've used to download the things I needed in order to stabilize my, my video or my video footage. So I'm just gonna go step by step with you so there's no confusion. So I'm just gonna copy the first link on top and by the way, all these links will be in the description below so you won't have to worry about, you know, manually typing it in. You can just copy and paste. All right, so the very first link on the top takes you to the Virtual Dub site where you can download Virtual Dub. Now, if your computer is a 32-bit computer, then you would download the 32-bit. Most computers these days are 64-bit, so I'm gonna go with 64. My downloads go to my download folder. Your downloads may go to somewhere else. That's just where you have to go. Next thing I'm gonna do is download Virtual Dub and it'll go straight to my computer. After that, I'm going to select the second link. I'm gonna paste that link in here. And I'm gonna download the FF input driver bin 7-64 and save that. Then I'm gonna to go to the third link and do the same thing. And this is where the magic happens. So you definitely wanna install this. Again, 32 and 64 bit. So I'm gonna download the 64 bit version straight to my computer. I'm gonna go to the next one, which is actually VLC. VLC is just a video player that pretty much plays all videos that I can even think of. But the reason why we're gonna use uh, VLC today is just for a video conversion. So this is something that you would need to download because it is also free. We're gonna save that. And then last but not least, we need to download a codec so that we can render the stabilized footage in a format that our players can read. And we're gonna save that file. And that's it, we're done. Pretty simple so far. So let's close this browser. We don't need this link anymore. And let's go to this folder. And then in here, we can go to our downloads and then we have the files that we downloaded. This is the way I do it. You can do it your own way. 
But I create another folder on my desktop. I'll name it VDub. First thing I'll do is open up Virtual Dub and all the contents within that zip file, I'll just drag straight into this folder. The next thing is the FF input driver. And you notice there's a plugins folder straight into that zip from that zip file. And you also have a plugins folder here. You can drag and drop and replace the plugins folder, but I'm just gonna double click on it and just so you can see what's inside of the default installation of Virtual Dub. And there's nothing in there. So we're just copying the contents from one window to the other. Not a big deal, pretty simple so far. And then finally, where the magic happens is the shaker. We'll open up the plugins folder. We'll drop the shaker right in there. Then we have VLC. And what I do is I just install the defaults. So we'll click on next, 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 and then uncheck run VLC media player and then finish. And then this is actually what you would need uh, as your codec in order for uh, virtual dub to save your AVI file with this codec. All right, and that's it. That was really simple. All right, guys, now that we have the software copy to your desktop, don't mind the folder name. I just renamed it to virtual-dub. What we're gonna do is just click on the folder and we're gonna look for the software called VEEDub64. We're gonna right click and we're gonna select run as administrator. From here, we are just going to select the file and then we're gonna go to open video file. We're gonna select our video that we wanna stabilize and we're gonna click on open. On the left hand pane is gonna be your original file and then the right hand pane will be your processed uh, outputted file. Next you wanna to go to video and then you wanna select filters, click on add and then select a D shaker 3.1. That is your gold. That is what does all the magic. Now you're gonna to have to run two passes. Pass one is a D shaker analyzing the video and pass two is the final output on how you want the video processed. So on the bottom or towards the left hand side, there is a camcorder has rolling shutter. Change that, select it first and then change that to 83%. On the right hand side, it's gonna be a scale, select full and then hit okay. Hit okay again. And there's gonna be two play buttons on the bottom left hand side. The left play button is to play the video and the right hand play button is to actually start the process. So give it some time for the video to process. This actually takes quite a bit of time. If you wanna see the progress, you click on view, show status window, and then now you'll see the progress so you have an idea of how long it's gonna to take to process the video. Now on the bottom right or on the right pane, you're gonna on the bottom you're gonna see a green bar. Green means good. Just keep that in mind. And if it turns yellow or red or orange, such as this, uh, then you know that the program is having a little bit of a harder time processing the video. But if for the most part it stays green, then you'll be in good shape. So I'm gonna fast forward this video because this will take a while, and then we'll get started on phase two. All right, now that the video has completed its processing, uh, what we have to do is go to the video and then we're gonna select compression. For whatever reason, it didn't pick up in my screen recording, so you'll just see the window pop right up. And in the compression settings, this is where we select our codec. Our codec is important because that's how it's going to render the, fo uh, render the video uh, in such a form that we can play it back. We're gonna select the X264 on the bottom, which is the software that we installed earlier. We're going to hit OK, and then we're going to proceed. All right, now that we set the codec within the compression menu, what we want to do again is go to video and then filters, and then we want to reselect a D shaker uh, filter. And what you're going to notice is now that we're done with pass one, we need to select pass two. Please ensure that the camcorder has a rolling shutter is still selected and still set to 83%. Just keep in mind, I have no idea if that makes any difference in the final result of the video. However, pass one you'll notice is now grayed out and you now have selection available for pass two. Under edge compensation, uh, what I would select is adaptive zoom average at first. And what that does is it allows the shaker to minimize the amount of crop that it has to do within the actual video itself in real time. So that's, that's really good. So what that means is that certain times you need to crop a lot, certain times maybe not so much. So it adapts to that type of crop so you don't lose so much resolution 
throughout the whole video. At least that's what I think it does. Now, if that doesn't work for you because what for whatever reason is too choppy or whatever the case might be, you can always select the fix zoom no borders option. And what that will do is it will crop in to the worst part of your black edge and stick it to that option. So just be sure that if you know adaptive zoom doesn't work then feel free to do the fixed zoom and there's two other options above that that you can also try if you're not happy with those two on the bottom now the most important part at least to me are the the options on the bottom where you have motion smoothness the panning the vertical panning the rotation and the zoom the smoothness i normally leave to default but i have seen people increase that to you know upwards of 5000 but I normally leave that at default. I haven't really played with that area yet, but um, I think for me and for this video, it works pretty well. Now, the most important part is the max correction limits on the very bottom where it says horizontal panning, rotation, vertical panning, and zoom. The default, I believe, is somewhere around 25. Uh, what I like to do is drop this down to three. Three on the horizontal, three on the vertical, and three on the zoom, two on the rotation, and what I think this does, and I have tested it, the higher the number, the more cropped in or the more zoomed in, uh, DeShaker will zoom into the video to, to deshake it, to stabilize it. And the more it can zoom, the more stable the video will be. So what I would do, and it says here in percent and degrees, so my assumption is that horiz horizontal panning set at 3 is 3% three uh, cropped in or zoomed in. And so I think 3% is a perfect percentage for the video, at least in this example, where you're borderline still stabilizing but not cropping in to the point where the image quality is just destroyed and you're just fully cropped in and it's unusable. So I think 3% is good. It takes 3% will take out all the small oscillations, the jitters and all those kinds of things. And again, everything else would be, you know, better, you know, being a better pilot. And well, it can also lead to depending on what project that you're working on and how much of a stabilization that you need. So I'm just going to press OK, press OK again, and then deshaking will deshake the video, stabilize the video, however you want to put it. The next thing you want to do is go to File, Save as AVI, and then you're going to rename your file to whatever you want. Um, but what you want to do here is once you select where you want to save the file, the virtual dub and or DShaker will start doing work. It'll start rendering your file out to wherever you want it to be based off of the settings that you configured in Pass 2. So what we'll do is let this process and then I'm going to fast forward through the video for the final outcome. All right, once that's done, you wanna open up your VLC media player program under the media menu, under the convert, convert and save, another window will pop open. You wanna click on the add button and then you wanna select the video that Virtual Dub had exported in the AVI format. From here, you wanna select on convert and save again on the bottom and under the destination file area, you want to select browse and you want to select the directory where you would want to save the converted file. What you're doing here is you're converting AVI to MP4. So you rename it to MP4 and then you click on save and what Virtual Dub will do is it'll convert the file from an AVI to an MP4 so you can easily import it into any one of your editing software programs such as Final Cut Pro or DaVinci or things of that nature. Keep, please keep in mind that there's no video playback in VLC when it does its conversion. So you'll have to watch the play bar on the bottom. And once the play bar reaches to the end, then you'll know that your file has been completed and you should see an MP4 version of that file on your desktop. That's pretty much about it. It's not that difficult. It is a longer process and a little bit more involved than any other stabilizing software that I've ever used. But to me, it's definitely worth it. And now we'll see a side-by-side -side example of before and after. We'll see the differences between the original and the stabilized video. Here we go.
So a quick tip when it comes to video image stabilization, tip number one, be a better pilot. The better you can fly, the less the software has to work to stabilize your image. Second tip, tune your drone. If you're able to tune your drone, you should try to tune your drone to ensure that you decrease the amount of stabilization that's needed in your footage. The less work the software has to do, the better your image will work. Right now, all image stabilization software, including the GoPro Real, Real Steady Go, will crop your image in. And the worse you fly, the more it has to crop in. So the better you fly, the less it has to crop in. Second, if you're going to post a video in 1080p, you want to record it in something higher. 1440, 2K, 4K, 8K if you want. Uh, and the reason is the same. Because when you run it through image stabilization software, the software will crop your image in. And then when you run image stabilization software, you kind of have to balance between a stabilized image or a super cropped in image or uh, video and it just looks terrible because it's just so zoomed in it becomes pixelated at that point. Now other tips are shooting in 24 uh, frames per second, even 30 frames per second. That kind of hides a lot of the tiny oscillations and things like that because it's kind of blurring it out. But what if you don't want to shoot in such low frames per second and you want to shoot maybe in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second? That makes it that's going to show a lot more of those oscillations and, and jerks and things like that. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, really appreciate that. If this video was helpful to you, hit that like button. If you want to see more photography or videography related videos, hit that subscribe button. I enjoy this kind of thing. So hopefully more, uh, you know, I can have more reviews and, and this kind of uh, videos uh, in the future. Only time will tell. But yeah, thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. All right.